It's now the middle of June and we've had another extraordinary month of weather in the English summer. Now firstly, I think June is just the most beautiful month for English gardens. So please stay with us and just see around. This is about as good as my garden's going to get ever. So that's really exciting. But we've had extraordinary weather. We've had temperatures of 23 and 24 degrees Celsius and we've been outside in the garden eating every single meal having lunch parties just having a great time and then suddenly torrential rain i mean such awful rain that some friends have been actually flooded out of their houses and then we get this sort of slightly cool weather we've got today where it's not really very easy to know what to wear it's maybe 13 14 degrees it could go up you know you could find yourself bo boiling hot so anyway of course the weeds have absolutely loved it let me walk you round the garden, starting with the back door. We open it to see what we call the parterre. Our house is a very simple Georgian design with four rooms on each of two floors, so we wanted to mirror the four square geometric balance of the house. We have steps up from the terrace onto a parterre, which is divided into four equal squares of lawn, a cross of paths and with a large pot at the centre. Before we go up onto the parterre, however, there are two bin sheds and a log shed on the left. Along with the back door, front door, gate and shed, they're all painted in Farrow and Ball's black blue. There are so many different storage elements in what is quite a limited space, so painting them all one colour stops it from looking too chaotic, I hope. On the right is a table and chairs and the shed. Now for the parterre. The main bed on the right is directly in front of the kitchen window, so we see it all year round. I concentrate my real gardening efforts here and try to make it interesting or colourful in every season. In the past few weeks we've had wonderful irises and poppies, followed by Allium purple sensation. And now we have Allium christophii and a few roses. The most dramatic part of this bed right now is the Catinus Cagiria Grace and Clematis Rector. I'll put these names in the description below. Both were planted by my predecessor in this house and I think they're astonishingly beautiful. In the centre of the parterre is a topiary spiral which I bought directly from a topiary farm. It was quite a job to get it into the garden and it's by far the most expensive plant I have, but I think it's worth it. Around it are four lavender beds. I'm glad to see that these come, are about to come into flower. I cut my lavender back hard and we've had a harsh winter, but it has all been fine. If you want to know how much you need to cut your lavender back by, there's a video on how to cut English lavender in the description below. The usual advice is don't cut into the wood, but actually you can and should, as long as there are buds, little buds, low down, and it keeps the lavender in much better shape. Then there is another set of steps and the garden opens out into a lawn. We decided on a rectangular open lawn because that's so quick to mow. We have an overgrown pergola on the left which is currently used as a dumping ground and then this is theoretically my white bed. Just out now is black elder or Sambucus nigra which has wonderful foliage and flowers. I've tried to clear the Japanese anemone from this bed but it comes back in force so I'll just have to accept it. The foxgloves are self-seeded and the grey foliage is stachys, which grew from a tiny bit given to me by a friend. We often sit on this bench and look back at the house. The garden is an L shape so we can see the veg beds too on the left hand side. Now this bed has a holly golden king. It used to be a great big lump of a shrub but over the past three years I've asked Salvatore who's an Italian gardener and an expert on topiary to cut it into a topiary shape. If a shrub has already grown it does take a while to topiarise it and the first few cuts in the first few years didn't look as geometric as this one and there were lots of gaps but the plant grows into its new shape and we are now very pleased with it. Underneath it has many self-seeded plants such as Smyrnium perfoliatum, Angelica and foxgloves. At this end we've covered the pergola with corrugated iron and it's now an all-weather eating space which is lovely. My brother-in-law from Australia did it for us and he learned how from YouTube. There's a post with more about this in the links below. This south-facing bed is a bit wild. I suppose that's a nice way of saying a bit of a mess. I love the sundial which was given to us by some friends but the bed itself gets very weedy and brambly and I think that's because I don't have a vision for it. Now for the veg patch. The potatoes, three heritage varieties sent to me for review by Marshalls are coming up well and I'm also growing courgettes, beans, curlettes, elephant garlic, kale, chicory and tomatoes. The coriander has bolted yet again, but the flowers are so pretty I don't mind. 
Now we walk down the path at the side of the garden to get back to the house. Trimming the hedge is on my to-do list and I have managed to do some weeding and planting so we should have asters and veronicastrum with our dahlias in a couple of months time. Do come back and see how it all turns out. Here is the shed again and we're back to the terrace. I hope you've enjoyed the tour and found some helpful tips and if so do hit like because it lets me know that you'd like more garden tours. The Middle Sized Garden uploads on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration from real gardens for your garden. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. Thank you.